I have grown to love Turkish Airlines, having flown them quite a lot. Almost exactly a year ago, I took this exact flight in the exact same aircraft type that I'm going to fly today. In this video, I will compare the experiences I had along with the catering services and the experience overall on board a medium haul into European flights. So join me today as I fly to Istanbul on the Turkish Airlines Airbus A321neo. My day started at my home airport, Manchester Airport, during the latest morning hours of the day. My flight today will be leaving from Terminal 1, one of the terminals that Manchester Airports are currently planning to renovate in their £1.3 billion transformation programme, but more on that later. I checked in online so luckily I could cut most of the queue, which was great as these lines can sometimes get quite long and I really recommend doing it. So now we've finished checking and we're heading into the main part of the terminal, duty free. Have a look around and then uh, try and find the plane at the gate. As I said before, Terminal 1 is one of the terminals that will be renovated in Manchester Airport's transformation program and I can really see why they need this renovation. Terminal 1 was opened in 1962, 54 years ago, and compared to other airports that Manchester Airport is competing against, this isn't quite good. Something I really like about Terminal 1 is the apron views which don't disappoint. For most of my time, I gazed out of the window at the heavies taxiing past. Our ride today is on this one-year-old Airbus A321neo of Turkish Airlines which arrived a few minutes late due to a late departure from Istanbul. However, it didn't take long for the Swiss port staff at Manchester Airport to turn the aircraft around for its departure back to Istanbul. Welcome on board the Turkish Airlines Airbus A321neo. The cabin is set out in a standard 3-3 configuration in the Turkish Airlines black and red seats which looks stunning. My first impressions were pretty similar to the flight I took last year and I do really like this seat. To be honest, I wouldn't even mind taking a long haul flight on a seat like this. The seat comes with a decent recline and a strong adjustable headrest, which is perfect for sleeping. I didn't want to film the recline as there were people sitting behind me with a baby and I didn't want to disturb them, but here is the exact same recline from the flight I took last year which is the exact same. The seats all together look stunning and have a good padding making them very comfortable. The seats also has a large entertainment screen, probably one of the largest I've ever seen, and the entertainment choices do not disappoint. Turkish Airlines have an amazing amount of movies as you can see here with 660 selections and they regularly add to it. On the same note, their TV show selection is just as good, maybe even better, offering more than 1,188 selections and as I said, they regularly add to it. There is also a wide variety of games, music, information about the airline and its routes, and an amazing map. Something that I really like about the map is this view with the hood, which is something that Avgi Exactly would like. You cannot run out of choices and it will definitely keep you company for the duration of the flight. There is also a USB port and a dual headphone jack under the entertainment screen, followed by a decent sized tray table, however it doesn't fold out which I think would be better to make it a little bigger and better. Underneath there is also a large seat back pocket with two additional smaller pockets making it good for storing things like your phone which is really convenient. Throughout the flight, the temperature of the cabin was perfect and there were individual air vents which were good. Not long after the safety video and a few adverts were played, we pushed back and headed for Istanbul. Once we were airborne and the seat spell sign was turned off, the fun began. It wasn't too long into the flight until the crew started the first service which was a choice of rice with aubergine or beef with a potato gratin which I ordered and I was quite impressed. Although the portion sizes weren't as large as I hoped them to be, the meal still tasted amazing. Turkish Airlines are really known for their onboard catering and I can really see why. You can tell easily when something is fresh and when something isn't, and the salad tasted really fresh. Along with all of these, there was also some sort of apricot pudding which did not disappoint. Excellent. 
Something I really like about the meals with Turkish Airlines is that they usually give you a warm and crusty bread roll. Many airlines out there do give you bread rolls, however not many actually taste fresh and aren't usually heated from what I've experienced on board other airlines. While I was eating, I couldn't help myself but kept looking outside the stunning views of Amsterdam Schiphol Airport outside. After I had finished my meal, the crew collected all of the meal trays and rubbish and a little while after started the tea and coffee service. This service is usually more common on long haul flights, however having this service on a medium haul into European flights is spectacular and so I opted for some tea. I then checked and saw that Turkish Airlines offered Wi-Fi on this flight. There were different packages and I decided to purchase the chat pass, which was really fast and I was able to text on board no problem. Turkish Airlines Miles and Smiles members can also get a certain amount of Wi-Fi for free. A little more into the flight, I thought I should do my first flu review, so here it is. There are three lavatories located at the back of this A321 Neo, which I thought was enough, and there weren't really any queues going through the aisle, which was good for passengers sitting towards the back. Altogether, the lavatory was quite spacious but was a little dirty. However, not to worry, as soon as I got out, I saw a crew member go in to give it a quick clean. This brings me on to the crew, which were absolutely sensational. They were so friendly and caring throughout the entire flight, and halfway through, I went to speak to some of them at the back about my passion for aviation, and they loved it. One crew member that stood out though was called Senna. She was so professional, even throughout the entire flight, always had a smile on her face. She insisted on taking a photo with me and my sister, and then went to speak with the purser about me, who then came also to see me. After this, the purser also went to speak to the captain and came back with a few surprises. Prizes. She told me that the captain would like to see me after landing and he's also wanted me to give me his stripes that he wears on his shoulders. Not only this but the purser also gave me some Turkish roasted hazelnuts from business class. Fancy. Not too long later we began our approach into Istanbul. I love the approach into Istanbul airports including during the sunsets. The views of the Bosphorus mixed with the indescribable colour of the sky was beautiful. landed only a few minutes behind schedule but the pilots had made up some time in the air. We then started our long taxi across most of the airports which involved going round one of the end rounds to reach our gate. Even though it was long, I didn't seem to mind as I sat back and rewatched all the exotic airlines that come into Istanbul, such as this Mahan Air was A340. We eventually pulled up in between this Turkish Airlines A321 and an Air France A320. The crew let me sit in business class while I waited for the remaining passengers to leave so that I could go inside the cockpit and I thought to myself one day as I glared at one of the menus that was left behind. I indeed entered the cockpit and managed to talk to the captain however I wasn't allowed to film due to the company's rules. I left the aircraft with a smile. It was an incredible flight that made many memories that I'm sure will stay with me forever. For now though let's talk about Istanbul Airport. Huge Istanbul airport, this place is absolutely amazing. Down there's the departures down there. This airport is absolutely huge. And for walking it's not the best. But the views go a different point. I'm probably the trillionth person to say this, but not only is Istanbul the meeting capital of the world, this is also the walking capital too, which probably isn't much of a surprise as this is the world's largest single roof airport. And for those that are elderly, pregnant or have some sort of disability, they can get the buggy to go wherever they need to go. Despite the amount of walking, the airport is extremely clean and the architecture looks stunning. There's also some cool amenities around the airport such as these charging areas where you can sit down and charge your phone. Now for the conclusion. As I said before, this flight was amazing and has made many memories for me. Compared to last year's flight review, I feel like the airline has improved in many different aspects and I do hope they keep this going.
Just before I end the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe along with checking out my Instagram, link is in the description. Thank you for watching and thank you Turkish Airlines for the incredible experience.